Well, it seems to me that recognizing that we're in exile can bring us peace in the sense that we're recognizing the world in which we find ourselves as it truly is. Right. This life which we find ourselves in, it's not a sitcom. It's not a romance comedy. It's not, uh, it's not survival. It's, yeah. it's battle. Yeah, and once you which is a tragic that, comedy. I mean, it yeah, has elements of both. Yeah, but it's never going to just be sit back and laugh. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, and, and I guess do you agree with me then that we have to recognize that we are in exile so that we can recognize reality? Yeah, and once absolutely. you recognize reality, life actually goes better for you because you don't you have you don't you have appropriate expectations for what yeah, to experience. I, I think we tend to treat our faith as dessert. You know. Uh, we just want to eat what we want to eat. And then in the end, you know, oh, the sweets come and in the end we get to heaven and all of that. Mm. But the meat and potatoes of Catholic doctrine and moral teaching is the only safe way to form the conscience, to make decisions, and to form our families. And for that matter, to be leaven in the loaf of our parish because you know, we're, we're called to be leaven. Without it, the, the loaf won't rise. You know, one of the things that I really enjoyed about Brandon what he contributed in this in this book, I mean, he contributed so much. Um, this 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 insight into the asymptotic relation that we have. An asymptote is this curve that gets closer and closer and closer to the line, but never actually touches it. Okay, it's like that's real life. You know, I want to strive for holiness, and I'd like to think I'm getting closer to closer to heaven. But you know, another thing that he did. Uh, I contributed the notion of prolepsis, that is, an anticipation of the future good of, of heaven in every Mass and through the sacraments. But Stefan Cardinal Wyszynski, I didn't realize just how massive of a figure this man was in Polish history in the 20th century until Brandon kind of said, you know, w the, the last three or four chapters of the book are really practical insights into how to live out what, what Jesus is saying to the disciples there in, in Matthew 11, if I could find the table of contents. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And we touch upon things like how to live the Lord's Day as a family, how to live the Lord's Day personally, but when it's remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, you know, you work for six days and then rest the seventh, and not just you, but your wife, your sons, your daughters, your manservants, your maidservants, and even the sojourners who are in your gates. Mm. In other words, all of you are my children. Act like it. You know, don't lord it over the people who mm. are looking up to you. You let them rest. You let them pray. You let them worship. And that's what Christ is promising. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. <clears throat> but it was mostly theoretical, theological, you know, experiences of trying to live the Lord's day you know, as family. But this guy, you know, we all, I suspect, admire Pope St. John Paul II as much as anybody who ever lived in our lifetime. But he is the son of Cardinal Wyszynski. <laughs> you know, there would not have been a John Paul if there had not been a Stefan Cardinal Wyszynski. He was forged in the fires of a Polish Catholic culture that, you know, had been dominated for years, centuries, by the Russians. And then beaten and occupied by the Nazis, and then the Soviets come in 45, and he writes this book in 46, which is the worst English translation imaginable, working your way into heaven. I know, I was just thinking that. Oh, Let's put the hair like, up on the back of the neck of all Protestants. Yeah, Pelagius would be proud. <laughs> yeah. How to make work, stress, and drudgery a means to your sanctity, whereas the Polish title is simply The Spirit of Human Work. Oh, okay. And he wrote it after the Nazis and during the Soviets and... You know, I have not found a book that has been more helpful to me in terms of, you know, getting to work and praying before, during and after, but doing the best work I can, loving the hard work, especially when you don't see the fruits of it mm. and, and loving the world and entering back into the world and not just the bubble of Franciscan University, but into the, the mess of my own extended family, into the relationships that have been, you know, strained and that sort of thing. But especially the labor, the to-do list, you know, and not putting things off. And yet at the same time, admitting that at the end of the workday, I haven't gotten to half these things. Or if I did, I'm going to have to go back and redo some of them. And just the, the toil, you know, <clears throat> at one point we were actually going to labor. We were going to name the title uh, after this, Our Exile. 
because the Salve Regina has become sort of, you know, a mainstay in, mm. the, in the arsenal of prayers. But this book is featured in the last three chapters in a way that I hope really causes a revival of Wyszynski's genius, yeah. his sanctity. You know, truly John Paul, as the spiritual son of Cardinal Wyszynski, got the double portion, you know, as they say in the Old Testament. But this kind of man, this kind of leadership in the worst imaginable circumstances led Polish Catholics through the furnace, mm. like Daniel, like, you know, his three companions. And the, um, the thing is, I'm not a prophet, nor the son of a prophet, as the prophet Amos once said. Um, but I think things are going to get much worse. I think we've already begun to see that with the Middle East, with Hamas, with Ukraine, with, mm -hmm. you know, all of these things are like pots that are boiling and yeah. but beginning to boil over. And I think that we're going to see the, the cumulative result of some extraordinarily dumb decisions that have been made by leaders in the church and in the world, the federal, state, and local levels, and that kind of thing. And so I'm not a prophet, so I, I can't say, don't go to Egypt, go to Babylon, like Jeremiah put it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I can say that wherever we go, our Lord will be with us in ways that we won't even notice but in ways that we'll look back on and realize, you know, that, you know, he carried us, he carried our family as well. And so we want things to feel at home. We shouldn't ever feel too much at home if yeah, we're not in yeah. heaven. And God has this gentle, sometimes harsh <laughs> way of reminding us that you're exiles, you're pilgrims. The only place you ever really know as home will be heaven. And the first minute of heaven will look make a look a lifetime of 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 prosperity and pleasure look like a garbage dump in comparison and again that isn't like oh some rhetorical trope that will get us through hard times but it isn't really true hey thank you so much for watching before you go do us a favor leave a comment let us know what you thought of the video like and subscribe